The Branham Tabernacle in Jeffersonville, Indiana was at one time packed with people every Sunday morning, Sunday evening, Wednesday evening, and sometimes days or evenings between. After William Branham's death in 1965, Willard Collins became the head pastor and led the church for over 50 years. When elders in the church discovered some very unusual property transactions, Willard Collins and others began to investigate. What they discovered, combined with the response from the Branham family, was very disturbing. According to elders of the church, both money and property had been stolen. The deacons have been unable to fulfill all of their duties for a while because the treasurer trustee has said there is no funds available to help those in need. The question is, where is the money? When they resigned in 2015, they were unaware that these unusual transactions had been happening for quite some time. The trustees announced that the attorney made a mistake concerning the deed of the church. When there is a mistake, it should be corrected. The church should have been returned to the people not given away to a trustee family and his organization. We were able to locate copies of these transactions in the records department of the Clark County Courthouse. Our story begins with the 1938 Platt map. In 1936, the Billy Branham Pentecostal Tabernacle purchased lot 16 on the corner of 8th and Penn Streets. The church began as a series of tent revivals held on Lot 32 on the corner of 8th and Pratt Streets. 8th and Pratt was the location of the tent, which was called Pentecostal Tabernacle. William T. Ingram, who the subdivision was named after, owned most of the land. He sold Lot 16 to Pentecostal Tabernacle. Oddly, he sold a small portion of Lot 15 to William Branham's person. This is the side of the property which recent deacons claim to have been stolen by Branham's sons. Ingram himself remained the owner of the rest of Lot 15. In 1982, the Branham Tabernacle purchased Lot 31. At this point, Pentecostal Tabernacle owned Lot 16 where the church sits today, and Branham Tabernacle owned Lot 31, which was later converted into a parking lot. At the time of this purchase, leaders in Branham's cult of personality would have been fully aware that William Branham's Baptist stage persona was fiction. They purchased land for the Branham Tabernacle to sit beside the Pentecostal Tabernacle. William Branham claimed to have refused to join the Pentecostals, and because of that, his wife and daughter were killed by God in the 1937 flood of the Ohio River. Interestingly, 1982 is the same year that Billy Paul Branham, William Branham's son, and Willard Collins, pastor of the Branham Tabernacle, held a vigil in hopes that William Branham would rise from his pyramid grave. But this was not the first time that leaders in Branham's cult were made aware of the fictional backstory created for William Branham's stage persona. Two additional transactions dated back to 1953 and 1954. In 1953, William Branham deeded the strange piece of property that he owned only a small portion of in 1938 to Branham Tabernacle. The other half appears to have been magically included in the transaction. A year later, Pentecostal Tabernacle purchased lots 13 and 14. At this point, Pentecostal Tabernacle owned three lots, and Branham Tabernacle owned one lot. Branham Tabernacle still did not own the property that the Branham Tabernacle sits on today. 
In 1984, the unusual part of Lot 15 that William Branham owned was transferred from the Branham Tabernacle to the William Branham Evangelistic Association. This is the organization that was owned and operated by William Branham's son, Billy Paul Branham. Along with it, Lots 12, 13, and 14 were transferred from the Branham Tabernacle to the William Branham Evangelistic Association. Then in 2002, the other part of Lot 15 was transferred from Branham Tabernacle to Voice of God Recordings, the business entity owned and operated by William Branham's other son, Joseph Branham, the current central figure of the cult today. Three additional properties were purchased in 2003 for Branham Tabernacle. Other properties were quit claim deeded away from Branham Tabernacle to Voice of God Recordings, such as Lot 51 of Ewing Lane, miles from the Branham Tabernacle. In their resignation from the Branham Tabernacle, elders of the church blamed one trustee for the transfer of what they claim to be stolen property. This document appears to be the only court record listing the officers of the Branham Tabernacle. Was Billy Paul Branham, William Branham's son, who helped him in the healing revivals and passed out prayer cards, the person that elders of the Branham Tabernacle accused of stealing church property? Branham Tabernacle, Jeffersonville, Indiana. Dear Brother I have been blessed by serving as a deacon at the Branham Tabernacle for the past 37 years. I'm writing to inform, informally submit a resignation effective Monday, August the 17th, 2015. Your brother in Clyde, your, bro your brother, Brother Pastor Branham Tabernacle, 804 Penn Street, Jeffersonville, Indiana. Dear Brother, it is with great sorrow that I tender my resignation from the Branham Tabernacle Board of Deacons, effective immediately after much prayer and thoughtful consideration. I believe that my Reg resignation is the best course of action for me and my family. The last several years have been one of the greatest honors in my life to serve as one of the deacons and to have served with some of the finest brothers I've ever known. You stood faithful with the message for 40 years and I will always stand with you again. I am very honored to have had the opportunity to serve on the board of deacons with the Branham Tabernacle, and may God bless you sincerely, Deacon. 8, 2015. It has been an honor to serve under you for the past 33 years. I believe that you have done your best to point souls to Christ through this end time message without wavering one bit in the time and I have known you. I have decided to step down from the deacon board at this time. I will always look to you as a servant of God and cannot thank you for all that I have learned from you. May God richly bless you sincerely. This is from Brother Precious Brother. We thank him for the service he has given to us. We really appreciate it. Here's what he said. I consider myself a very fortunate man to have had the opportunity to serve our precious Lord Jesus as a deacon, likewise to work with our precious Brother in service to the believers in the Branham Tabernacle. Brother Branham appointed Brother as pastor of this church. 
He is the absolute authority in all things. Brother Collins never tried to build himself an empire of wealth and fame. He chose the humble and unselfish route. What an honor to know and love this man. God's people in the tabernacle are truly some of the most sincere and wonderful people to walk with the face of the, in the face of the earth. It humbles me to know and worship with such devout believers of this glorious message. The trustees announced that the attorney made a mistake concerning the deed of the church. When there is a mistake, it should be corrected. Amen. The church should have been returned to the people, not given away to a trustee family. Amen. And his organization, surely Brother Brandon would be displeased with the turn of events. He and Sister Branham deeded the church to the people in 1953. I believe that something that is stolen from all of us is dispersed to the Lord and can never be blessed for it is tainted. The deacons have been unable to fulfill all of their duties for a while because the treasure trustee has said there is no funds available to help those in need. The question is, where is the money? I've endeavored to do my best for the Branham Tabernacle. Brother Branham intended this to be a sovereign church, not one owned by an organization. I, I must step down because of the decision this church is now going. So it is with a heavy heart and deep regards that I resign my position as deacon. I trust and hope that everyone will understand the seriousness of this thing that has been done. God bless you, brother and sister, as of 8 30, 15. With great re res regard, Regret. regrets. Under the present situation, we feel it is time for us to resign as janitor of the Branham Tabernacle, keeping the parking lot clean, taking care of the flowers, first response to the alarm company, give tours of the church, and song leader and piano player. It has been wonderful working with Dad, Brother and you people. The church is very dear to our hearts, remembering the many times Brother Branham was here and knowing the angels line these walls. What a blessed people we are. We're resigning of all our duties at the Branham Tabernacle. God bless you. As of August the 31st, 2015. I hate this time has come that I must do this. I wish to retire as pastor of the Branham Tabernacle as of this date, Sunday, August 30th, 15. I have labored so hard for this message and I am 89 years old and have tried so hard to keep it on the word, but it looks like it is falling apart. It is the only thing I know to do. Therefore, I'll pray for you folks and be sure and pray for me. I won't be having any more funerals or weddings. Okay, well, there's a bunch of them. May I say something, please? Uh, just a minute. Yes, sir. We know one thing. We've had the greatest bunch of men I've ever seen together 
to hold this message as best they knew how. I believe that. And I believe there's some trying times ahead. I believe that it won't be long till we'll look back and say, wasn't those precious times? Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Uh, wasn't they great? We enjoyed the blessings of the Lord coming among us. I don't know what's going to happen, but I can tell you one thing. The Lord knows. Amen. And it had better be kept straight now. We're too close to home to mess it up. We better look to Him to help us Amen. at this hour. He's our only help, but He is a great help. Amen. And I appreciate being able to be with you folks for almost 46 years now as a pastor of the tabernacle. I worked with Brother Branham, watched him, watched how he maneuvered, how he handled things. I've been with him a lot. And I saw how that he meet a stranger. He didn't jump on him with all four feet and tell him how he's going to hell if he don't straighten up. You know, some people have that idea. I'll tell you what he would do. He'd talk to that fellow about fishing, about hunting, all just anything the man wanted to talk about. And sometimes he would never mention the church, the Bible, or nothing. Other times he would. If he found the place where he thought there was hope of reaching the man, he would stay with him. Otherwise, he'd let it drop. Because, after all, there's only so many. And he knew who would and who he would not. He had the answer. He could tell you what you had for breakfast three weeks ago if you wanted to. I'll tell you, he was, he was God tabernacled in the flesh. Amen. Nothing short of it. And he had all the answers, just like they should be, to help the people. He come to help the people, not to hurt them. He didn't want to hurt nobody. He wanted to help everybody. And I've been so honored to be with him since 1955. I feel like that it's really strengthened me in the things of the Lord. And I thank Him for that. And I thank you for putting up with me all this time. You've been very gallant, and I appreciate it. Some of you have stayed away from church. Let me tell you something He told me. I was resigning a long time ago. I was tired and weary and when I'd get up to speak, people would get up and march out. That makes a preacher feel bad. I don't care who he is. It's true. It's true. And uh, then I'd meet them outside and put out my hand and shake hands with them. They'd just turn their back and walk away. Then they started leaving the church, one by one. Well, I thought maybe if I resigned, they'd come back. I wasn't blaming them. And I had my resignation written out. He called me one Saturday from Tucson, Arizona. He said, Brother Collins, I was up in the mountains praying today and the angel of the Lord told me to call you. What's the matter? I said, I guess everything's all right, Brother Branham. He said, no, no, that, that's not it. He said, there's a problem, and you tell me what it is. I said, well, 
I was resigning tomorrow. I told him why. He said, don't you do that. He said, I can tell you the reason why they went out from us. I didn't know what to expect then. I said, what, Brother Branham? He said, because they weren't of us. Now that shook me. They weren't of us. And I believe that true believers will hold to nothing but the word of the Lord Amen. that come to this day. Amen. This is the greatest day in history. Yes. It's a lovely time. And I trust that God blesses every one of you supremely from now on. I don't know what I'm going to do now, but I felt like it was time to do something because I worked under the Methodist Church for a long time. And it wasn't easy. And I went through some things very similar to what I see going on. I'm going to tell you one thing they promoted. And that was get the young people, get the young people, get the young people. Whatever you have to do to get them. And I found what their theory was. If you get the young people, eventually you get the parents. And if you get the parents, eventually you'll get their money. I find nearly everything is based on money value. Amen. You can't base this on money value. Amen. This is the word of the Lord Amen. that he has so generously given to us. And the Lord helping me, I'll stay with it the longest day I live, which won't be too long now. You know, I'll soon be 90 years old. It won't be too long, but I want to give him everything I've got. Amen. However, I have to do it. I love the Lord. Amen. And ever since I went to that meeting in Macon, Georgia, I've understood more about the Lord than I ever knew was possible to know. And I've watched. And I see what's taking place. If you'll watch your types, you'll see it too. But God bless you and be with you is our prayer.